Hi, my name is Steve McKay from Motion Control Products. Today I'll be talking to Chris Fernier of Advanced Motion Control regarding SBCs or single board computers. Hi Chris, can you explain to the audience what a SBC is, commonly known as a single board computer? A single board computer is basically what um, that phrase states. It's what we would take to be a fully functioning computer, but on a single printed circuit board. Now, if you think about what's inside your typical computer, those same components and the same functionality are found on a single PCB or circuit board. You've got a processor, you've got memory, you've got I.O. You may even have an operating system there and you have all of the components that normally would go into the main board in a mainframe computer, a desktop computer, or even your laptop, or for instance, even a touchpad uh, computer. The only thing that would be missing although the functionality is built in to connect to it, would be your screen. Thanks for that, Chris. So what are the requirements for an SBC? The requirements of a single board computer are fairly straightforward. They consist of um, an increasingly small size printed circuit board, um, low cost, and generally fairly high performance. Now, those are all generic uh, constraints, but let me give you some examples. Um, today, the average size of a single board computer can be two or three inches by another inch on the extreme size. And the circuitry on that computer and the processing power would probably be anywhere from 15 to 20 times bigger than um, the Z80 microprocessor used in the Apollo 11 program. So going back, there are three constraints or three parameters that make up a single board computer. Cost, size, and processing power. There's a range of that, but increasingly, because of what technology has been able to do, um, as size shrinks and cost shrink, processing power goes up. Okay, so what are the advantages of an SBC? Well, uh, as I stated previously, the advantages of, or what are the advantages of a single board computer uh, can be found in three parameters. Cost, size, and processing power. Increasingly today, um, you've got very complex pieces of machinery, you've got retail products, you've got medical products that demand small size at an, a lowered cost, but also the ability to increase or enhance processing power. If you think about um, where motor vehicles were, your standard automobile, there's essentially a single board computer controlling everything about that vehicle the minute you start that engine. So, what are some of the characteristics? You have to be able to fit it in a small size. You can't put a two foot by two foot by two foot box inside the engine compartment of your car. It has to have very good processing power. You have to be able to pull in information on uh, gas mileage, timing on your engine, when to fire spark plugs or relays, doors opening, interface with the radio, and increasingly to take other single board computers with touchscreens in most modern vehicles today and integrate them. So once again, what are the advantages of single board computer? very low cost, really good processing power, and small size. Good overview. So when might it be best to use an alternative? Well, when you think about what are the alternatives to single board computers and where might they not fit, increasingly that is becoming very small. However, there are some very sophisticated applications that really require processing power that goes beyond the physical dimensions of memory chips and processors that can be put on a single board computer. Um, I'll give you an example. 
you are in a radar station on the Aleutian Islands and within X amount of time you have to be able to process that radar signal looking out across the Pacific Ocean to determine all of the characteristics of that radar signal. That takes a massive amount of processing power. Multiple boards, extremely fast processors that need to be cooled just to keep them running. Those are almost, although not the same, comparable to what we used to call mainframe computers. That's a classic example of where one single board computer will not cut it. Okay, Chris, so can you describe a simple system using an SBC? Um, let's talk about um, a simple system in which a single board computer would be used. Something that hopefully most people uh, will not have to interact with, but unfortunately today, um, everyone sooner or later makes their way into a hospital. Well, um, the doctor may order um, an x-ray of your chest. Maybe your son fell out of a tree. Maybe he had some unconsciousness and he's having difficulty breathing. Um, but you can't bring the child to the x-ray department. So what ends up happening is that x-ray machine, a portable x-ray machine, has to be brought into the child's room, placed above the child's chest. And at that point, you generally have multiple positioning axes of motion controlling motors. So that's an example where the single board computer not only has to process that signal, it's got to interface with the power to the x-ray, but it also has to move those motors. You may have to scan in two or three directions in three-dimensional space. That's an example where today, and for many, many years, that's being done by a single board computer. Thank you for that, Chris. We hope you found this informative. Stay tuned for further technical podcasts and more in-depth presentations coming in the near future. My name is Steve McKay at Motion Control Products. Thanks for watching.